What's going on Neon Nation? Welcome back to the Neon Arcade for some more Cyberpunk 2077 news. Today we're diving into an interview senior quest designer Philip Weber did with moderators on the CD Projekt Red forums about quest design, street stories, playstyles, and more, Keanu Reeves at the Tokyo Game Show, a new making of cinematic trailer, and some new crafting and public transit details. First let's dive into everything about Cyberpunk 2077's quests featuring Philip Weber. I recommend you guys check out the full interview and I'll put a link in the description. Philip Weber was actually in the modding community before his role at CDPR, making a Witcher 2 mod called Lycaon, which won a red kit modding competition. His prize was a replica of the Arendite, which Geralt receives from the Lady of the Lake in the Witcher Wild Hunt. CDPR reached out to him and within a couple weeks, he was hired as a quest designer, surpassing his expectation of being in level design. For all of you modders out there, this is a pretty cool story of how quickly you can rise in the ranks if you're good enough. Weber also mentions that the differences between modding and quest design is working with colleagues and it being more of a collaborative team effort. Designing a quest starts very simply with an idea and a half page of text about this idea as a pitch. If it's chosen, Weber mentions how quests can be over 10 pages depending on what kind it is. For 2077, each screenplay or script of the quest is separated into sections like scene, exploration, and play styles, so at a first glance you can tell how they'll gel together. After this stage, the iteration process begins, starting with the writing and moving on to actual generation of the quests and characters. Dialogues are written with the sides or additional context called debug dialogues. For example, Philip Weber mentions this debug dialogue. V greets Dex. She's new to this and shows him a lot of respect. What job does he have to offer? If you guys have ever read screenplays, there are always junctions where debug dialogues are stationed to help the actor flesh out and understand the thought processes and emotions of their character. Weber also mentions that he can start off liking a quest, but as it develops, he can start to see flaws and inadequacies. Having a special moment where you can feel the quest is the goal that they strive for, but at the end of the day, testing of these quests by as many hands as possible is where they become truly confident in a quest. An emotional journey and feeling like the story is truly unique to your character is what Weber believes makes a good quest. CDPR also doesn't believe in fetch quests, although there may be some sort of elements in some areas. When it comes to CDPR's approach to the open world design of Cyberpunk 2077 versus The Witcher 3, Weber mentions that they're not doing a completely different approach with Cyberpunk, but they will use the lessons they've learned to help. They really want to focus on telling interesting stories anywhere in the world, but they also want to make everything you find meaningful in some way. In The Witcher 3, most of the bandit camps and communities were implemented by quest designers, but towards the end of The Witcher 3, they created a new open world team, which will extend to Cyberpunk 2077. Their role is in implementing a different kind of quest called a street story. In reference to the differences between main quests, side quests, and street stories, Weber mentions that main quests are played to get the end of the story, although the story is non-linear and not all main quests are always required. Side quests are all the other quests. They can be just as big or bigger than the main quest line, or small, but they don't have a place in the main story. Street stories are the bread and butter of a mercenary outlaw like V, which are similar to monster contracts in The Witcher 3. These are again designed by the open world team and are jobs you get from fixers that will increase your street cred. They also have minor quests which can be minutes long but are memorable. Side quests can impact the main quest. As an example, Weber mentions that despite finishing the main storyline in the Bloody Baron, many players were already playing a side quest after a thread from the main quest. The main quest was over once Geralt found information about Ciri, but the Baron's story still continued as a side quest. Characters you only meet in a side quest can suddenly show up in the main story, and sometimes a small quest can change the whole main story of the game. As a personal example, if you finished Hearts of Stone siding with Gontro Dim, he essentially tells you how to get the good ending in The Witcher 3 by instilling confidence in Ciri and not being overly protective of her. In a question about how NPCs respond to V's style, clothing, and cyberware, Weber mentions that there will be some reactions depending on the NPC's social status. Cyberware is seen the same way as we see smartphones today, and there will be a small group of people who abstain from augmentations. When it comes to procedurally generated quests, Philip Weber mentions that every quest is handcrafted. For them, quality is always more important than quantity. He mentions that we don't want to just keep people busy, we want to give them something to do that's worth their time. There are a ton more questions in this interview, so again, check it out in the description. Next, we have a new making of the CGI 2019 trailer from CD Projekt Red, so I'll let you guys check out a snippet. If you'd like to watch the entire thing, I'll link that in the description as well. Also, shout out to this motion capture actor for actually getting choked out to get the footage. That is some insane dedication. God damn it. Be my man. You're me. You're blowing up all over the news. Next, 
Next we have a couple details via Facebook from CD Projekt Red. First we have a question regarding crafting, with the fan asking about what you'll be able to craft in Cyberpunk. The 2077 Facebook page mentions that everyone will be able to craft so long as you invest in the right perks. You will be able to craft armor, shards for cyberware, weapon modules, special weapons, consumables, and gadgets. Just to clarify, shards for cyberware allow you to test out a piece of cyberware before fully committing and slicing open your body to install it. We also have a question about if you will be able to ride the Metro or the NCART, and you will be able to but rides won't be free. Finally, Keanu Reeves showed up at the Tokyo Game Show, so here's some wholesome pictures of him riding the Yaiba Kuzanaki as well as watching the demo. Thanks for watching guys and make sure you keep your eyes out for Saturday where I'll release my ultimate deep dive analysis video.